Alpha team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo team. We continued our search for the other members, and it turned into a nightmare. Damn it! Wait for that mansion! The remake of the original Resident Evil, first exclusively released on the GameCube, then ported everywhere shortly after, is the definitive and ultimate form of Resident Evil. Not the first, but the entire series. What the remake does is set a barometer for expectations in quality of design, lighting, camera, horror, anxiety, perfectly timed music and audio effects, and cues. The remake, quite honestly, is probably more aligned with a very well done and shot film. Just unfortunately with a B-movie aura surrounding characters and somewhat to an extent of plot. What is this? Essentially place? just the writing. Not quite your ordinary house, that's for sure. Hey Whisker, where's Chris? Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. But we've got to find... What was that? It at least makes most of that with having so little of it. This Resident Evil game is different. It is unlike any other, as no other Resident Evil replicates the fine details of this game ever again. This version of the first Resident Evil, as there are many, is by far the best iteration. The reason why this game holds up so well is largely in part due to these details you may very well gloss over while playing, or pay minimal mind to going through, but you absolutely know what they are and how they affect your playthrough. Let's start off with the lighting as right from the very start of this horrifying, chaotic rat maze of an experience, we set up the atmosphere and mood instantly. After the intro cutscene of frantically running to a mansion hidden in the forests of the Arclay Mountains, as we step inside we can see a lot of details and hints of what the game presents. While the main entryway is well lit, which is already peculiar for such a remote location, we also still get the sound and visuals of lightning and thunder while the rain pelts outside. Illuminating the idea of inside is safer than the outside, for the moment at least. What does Wesker do here? He already separated the group up, lowering the chance of survival for the squad. We already know the previous one is dead. Wesker ditches you instantly upon entering the next room, and after already hearing a gunshot from somewhere else in the mansion, things are going wrong, and that eerie sensation of what the hell is going on eggs you on. The desire to explore and find out what is going on is quickly cut short as your first experience with what's happening occurs. Yet the outside was more unsafe, leaving us already on edge with, what can we do to make it out when survivors are few and we're stuck in this mansion? Now, as Jill or Chris continue exploring the hallways and rooms, we find them dimly lit or no lighting at all. The entry was a false sense of security and the rest of the mansion littered with death and horror around nearly every single corner. We see constant reminders that the dark and low-lit mansion is affected by the storm outside. A flashing reminder that you aren't safe out there. And when the brief moment of light illuminates the interior, at times it's deceiving you into seeing things that may or may not be around. The lights casting brief shadows of zombies, or are they just branches from trees? Is there something lurking outside the walls ready to break through? Or is it just nothing? Constantly throughout the mansion, this is happening time and again, making you question what's there, what rooms are safe. 
This adds and fuels the intensity of the game. It's expound upon even more when you do actually have to go outside. The game has taught you outside is not safe. Dealing with what's inside is not much better. But at least there's a chance to find a way out. Like a terrible experience and an escape room that just continues to get worse and worse. The game always perpetuating using lighting to always set the mood. You notice in a safe room how wildly different it feels? It is comforting, soothing, it eases the constant tension constantly spent getting there. I did briefly mention some sound and how it affects and establishes a further sense of dread and horror. The thunder being a very abrasive noise. One contrasting to that of the silent and eerie hallways. It shocks the ears. It shatters the adjustment we've made to the eeriness and creepiness of the mansion. It throws us off something we're attempting to figure out while we try and come up with ways to escape this nightmare. Sound is pivotal, probably almost more so than the lighting. Weird and strange noises make us frantic compared to a storm that, sure, can be abrasive to a creepy atmosphere, but when you hear sounds you've never heard before, creaks of flooring you're unfamiliar with, sounds of things that could lurk around the corner, that's much more intense to try and rationalize. Lighting can mostly be constant, but that's why the lightning from the storm shatters that constant of the mansion's lighting. As I mentioned, Sound is a huge factor to why this game succeeds so splendidly as a master of horror. But sound is not just thunder to be heard outside, it also includes music. Having mentioned lightning being abrasive and contrasting in multiple ways the lighting and sound, music also achieves that because as you go through the game, you may have noticed music is not always present. Sometimes a silent hallway achieves more in that spine-tingling sensation of fear than one with highly fabricated musical notes. When you feel that sensation of being alone and there is no music, it is unnerving. Conversely, when you start to hear music, you expect something. The great thing is there is not always something there to be seen. Once again, the game is throwing the player off with misdirection. The reason why this particular Resident Evil game sticks out above the others in horror is largely due to misdirection, but misdirection with visual and audio senses. The action sequences in all the games to follow lose that perfectly timed and appropriately used misdirection. As you settle into a period of expectation and the games follow through on that, the original always throwing you off expectation. There is no guarantee around any corner, even if you previously traveled through it, that it is now deemed safe. A hallway's windows now cracked. A previously disposed of zombie now stands up and starts running at you this time. Nothing is as it seems. We've basically talked everything film related to this point, but largely I've ignored thus far the biggest part of what makes up a majority of a video game, the level design. Now, since this is more closely related to architecture than a fantasy world or a plumbing dreamland, let's navigate through the corridors and reveal what design elements aided in adding even more horror to this perfectly crafted relic. As we began outside, and at times see brief flashes of the outdoors, the night setting with the moonlight casting shadows, as mentioned previously aiding in that de facto misdirection by confusing the look of a lot of surfaces with its light. A carpeted or hardwood floor, now a shadowy vine looking mess disguising and blending ceiling and walls on downward to the floor. Everything is a faint relic of recognition, 
where you constantly analyze everything around you. Whereas in a normally lit setting, you pay less of mind to that around you, more solely focused on the task at hand, instead of distracted with all that is around you. This also forces you at times to slow down, to take in more information before proceeding. If it's hard to distinguish what's around you, you typically aren't going to just bulldoze your way through, especially if limited in weapons and resources to defend yourself with. As we continue throughout the hallways and rooms of the mansion, a very common design element is low lit lighting with candles, barely enough to fill a room with to see. Sometimes no light is present even at all. The decor largely muted colors with a dark red flooring reminiscent of the blood to be spilled by that of zombies. Scratched up walls and doors, lots of death and traces of despair and horrific events scattered throughout. A lot of this makes you wonder what happened beforehand, but it also lays foundation for what's left over and still present. The mansion also has a very antique aesthetic giving it that old rundown and creepiness to begin with. The decaying wooded flooring creaks throughout, sometimes leaving a noise in the distance to ratchet up the alertness levels before proceeding. Everything in this game placed with delicate care and reason. Not just a cool set piece to travel through, but a masterful craft of art. Complete opposite of later games in the series where getting you through the next room can't be done fast enough. Hurry! While we may never seemingly get a proper and well put together Resident Evil feature film, you essentially already have the definitive version of one in the remake of Resident Evil already as is. I highly encourage everyone to experience the grandfather clock of horror defining and laying out a solid mansion worth of foundation for the genre in many ways.